Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to do a director's commentary of Frosty's Halo 5 tournament only montage. I was the editor for this video and I wanted to go through the whole video and talk about each moment and maybe what things meant to me, what went into it, and stuff like that. Basically walk you through the process of it all. So just like the other director's commentaries I've done before, you're not going to be able to hear any of the music because it's copyrighted, so it's just going to be my voice talking. I'm going to hear the audio. You should obviously have seen this montage before seeing this video, so the link will be down in the description. But basically, we're just going to get into it. And yes, this is, uh, I don't know if you can see from the camera angle, but uh, a Twitch Halo shirt. This is from the PAX Invitational, I think, 2014. So like Halo 2 anniversary or before that came out. So I know, stylish. All right, so let's get into it. So to start it off, I wanted to get something super high quality. So this stuff isn't made by me. Any of the 3D work is made by LZ Edits. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'll put his link down in the description. But look how high quality that looks. Already right away starting off a video with something of this quality really makes it stand up or stand above a normal Halo montage. Like look at these clips here, this is beautiful. So I really think paying for people to work on your montage with you or to, to hire people to help improve your montage is a very big thing if you wanna take it to the next level or if you're doing a big one for a professional player who maybe is gonna help pay for some of it obviously. So I really wanted to get this nice 3D work in and it makes the video 10 times better. It looks amazing. So I'm really glad I did that. I wanted to use this song just from watching the Dirty Money uh, TV show on Netflix. This is obviously a song by Run the Jewel. You guys can't hear it, but um, I kind of got inspired from the intro of Dirty Money. I went with a little cleaner version than that. Didn't want a bunch of effects flying around. So just kind of showed off some gameplay, a quick, easy intro really let the 3D shine and carry, let the 3D carry the intro so we can get right into the montage. Don't want anything too long. Before I get into it, talk about the difficulties with this montage. So all of this footage is in sequential order, meaning the beginning of his Halo 5 timeline to the end. Besides, I think one or two clips, I might have like a game three clip before a game one clip, just to help with the syncing, I believe. Uh, we would have to, maybe we'll see it in here. But in order for that to happen, I asked 343 for some of the footage and they never gave it to me. So what I did is I went through all of YouTube and all of Twitch VODs from the Halo channel, from MLG, from whatever ESL, whatever was hosting each tournament. And I made a giant list of folders and I went through all of them here. Let me see if I can see the folders here. If we go into my footage here, you can see I have them labeled first with the date. So it shows up in order and then through everyone there, then I have this one, they just have the championship. This one is empty. Okay, that's a good example. Oh, it's loading. I guess it should let them load. But it shows exactly their games. And what I did in order to collect his footage is that I would play it. Here, let me find an example. Pretend this is um, gameplay. And what I do is I would just make this smaller. And I would scrub through until you see basically Frosty on screen like this. Because you could see the nameplates. I would just scrub, and as I saw Frosty, then I would go back to the beginning of it and play. And if it was a clip, I would then create a sub-clip, which would be just copying this chunk, dragging this over. You can't see because I'm using one monitor, but dragging this over to another folder within Adobe Premiere. So I had to watch every single game that his team has ever played. Now, I was going at either three times speed when his teammates were playing or slightly scrubbing, but anytime it got to him, I watched all his gameplay because you never know what the commentators might be saying about him or the casters might be saying about him or what he even does. One thing I never got to show off a lot in this montage is Frost is really good with his mobility. He's famous for crazy movement and basically inventing stuff in Halo 5, which doesn't always transfer over well to a Halo montage. So if you want to see some of that, I do have a video on my channel that has all his clips, even ones I didn't include in the montage, because some of them are just like cool movement and kills, but it really shows off his style and what he brought to Halo 5. So the first <laughs> the first hard part of the montage is I had to literally watch every Halo 5 tournament he was ever in, and it took months just to go through it all, because it's really just took hours to watch all this stuff, right? And then I would organize it into clips, and then from there I could start editing. So I have a lot, I think the whole project, let's see, is yes, 791 gigs, because I wanted to keep it at least good quality, and a lot of that will be because the visual effects folder and me playing with tons of effects, just going crazy with it. But yeah, the first, the first hardest task was getting the footage, because I had to watch it all, cap it all, 
um, organize it. Another big thing I struggled with is because I wanted to play the whole video in sequential order, as you'll see it says, um, story told in chronological order, I guess, is the syncing. Because you, when you edit a montage, at least for me, syncing is like the main thing. I focus on putting the best clips at the best part of the song, or like you can see the waveforms here. This is like a part where the song dips and has a big impact. That's where I would focus on putting the best clip with the ending sniper shot. But because I'm telling the story in chronological order, I'm forced to put these clips in a particular order and I have to try to edit and sync it the best way I can there. So I think I did a good job and it, it still flows very well, but there obviously are some parts of this montage that are slower. Some that show a lot more gameplay or sorry, that show a lot more IRL footage, like actual clips of Frosty, just to help fill in the gaps so that I could sync the rest of it. So I've rambled a long time, but let's, uh, let's get into it. So those are some of the issues before getting started. Show each team he was on, CLG, Optic, Talks, the, the amazing three work or 3D work again, which really just carries the intro and makes the entire video much, much better. That makes it really professional. I had to pay a lot of money for that. Maybe not a lot, but a decent bit just for a, a, like a Halo montage, but I think it's worth it. It looks amazing. So this one here, I actually just play all the game, all the IRL footage in reverse order. So you can see it's rewinding 2018, 2017, 2016. Nothing fancy, kind of just wanted to get into the gameplay here. So we start off in 2016 and here are some camera angles. One thing to note is I actually didn't have, oh, I went a little further. These angles I had originally were just some Spartans walking around and I got feedback from John Unicek, so the guy who works at 343. He said, hey, it would be more interesting if they were sprinting and he's obviously right because walking around just looks kind of funny. Man, look, look at that angle looks. That is clean. So I'll play it in full screen actually, that makes a lot more sense. But it just looks clean, just add a little depth of field. Ooh, all right. All these shots have depth of field on it, which means if I back it up here slowly, it's out of focus there and the foreground's in focus. So I had to rotoscope or mask around. You can even see some of the grass isn't really properly masked because how are you going to do that individually? So it's just a, a blur here, but really you don't notice it unless you're pausing like how I am. Now the foreground's slightly out of focus and the background's in focus. Same thing here, background's out of focus, foreground's in focus. Again, with the grass blades, if you pause, you're going to see there's issues because that's just impossible to mask all that every time. But as it's playing full speed, you probably don't notice it. And that's a beautiful one. Super easy to mask that because it's just like hard lines. There's some crazy grass in the foreground. We'll just play it through. But basically, kills this guy, picks up the sniper, then I use the motion of him picking up the sniper to cutting to this clip. So it looks like it's a fluid motion, but really it's him picking up the sniper and look at it cuts to him going up with the sniper on a different clip. It's like a few seconds later, but just cutting on action, which I have tutorials for on my channel. So not only is it the same action of a sniper moving upward because he's picking up a sniper, but he physically is moving upward as well. So you can cut on that and it makes it smooth. I'll play it uh, back a little bit here so you can see in full motion. Another trick is that's obviously on the beat of the music. So as there's a beat, as I punch my mic, uh, the cut is right there. So all these things together help hide cuts and make it smoother and improve your flow. Here's another example. Can I pause it too soon? But he starts whipping to the left. He does like a thrust to the left and this pillar in the foreground is going to the right. And we cut. I think we might do a fade. Yeah, where he's going to the left and then scoping in and there's a pillar somewhat on the right side. So just little things like that, if you keep in mind, you can really make it smoother. Same thing here, boom. He gets the shot and he whips to the right with a pillar again in the foreground and it cuts to him whipping to the right with a pillar going left on the foreground. Uh, I don't wanna break all of that down, but um, all of that is cutting on action. I have a tutorial called Editing Flow but that is combining several different things together. So where your eye is, which I have a tutorial on um, following the eye or leading the eye and cutting on action. Just keeping it smooth. Now, like any Halo 5 montage, especially because this is tournament footage, there are no angles. So I have to recreate all of these angles, which is the downside of making any Halo montage after Halo 4, basically because the Halo theater mode in the new ones, or at least in uh, Halo 5 here, 
doesn't let you save clips so you have to recreate all this and it's a huge huge reason for a downturn in halo content and hopefully they fix that with halo infinite and let you save clips and record them so i wasn't too sure if i wanted to use a lot of flares you can see there's a light flare as he gets the shot here and it goes in slow motion because in my snipe down montage I feel like I overused flares and lens streaks and it just looked a little too much or lens light streaks, I should say. And it was too much and too distracting. But in this one, I try to make it really, really subtle, really, if I could speak. Um, so there's some throughout you'll see mixed here and right here. When it slow mows, there's a little flare on the side right there. These are kind of last minute things I added as he kills them, falls and there's a little flare on the side. So let me back this up. Now, I was just recording this by myself, so you can kind of see the spoiler here. There's a, obviously uh, one of those pulse grenades, basically the forerunner grenade. And to get the shot of this guy getting disintegrated, yeah, this guy falling to pieces, I can't speak today, from the scattershock, which disintegrates, disintegrates the guy. All I did was throw down a pulse grenade and just run and jump into it right here. And then it caused that. So you can kind of see the spoilers of that right there. Also, you can see that uh, this is out of focus and this is in focus, just a rough mask to create some depth of field. You can't really see where the mask is because this is all gray, but there's a blur here. Very subtle. No one will probably ever notice that. And I put the extra time in to do that, but uh, hey, it's there, whatever. And then yeah, the lens flares I was talking about, there's a light one on the side here because you're getting these bright things closer to camera. So I add a light flare. They kind of do this cop out transition. I love the shot. But if you want to learn how to make these line effects, I just look on my channel a tutorial called Anime Lines, um, obviously inspired by uh, anime, just kind of motion lines to make things more fast, I guess, energetic. So people, I've never got any questions on this, but this shot here is literally him just throwing the flag and then dodging a bunch of shots and dodging grenades. And people were like, well, why? You just show a distraction metal. Is it really that cool? But I think I struggled with earlier on is Frosty does amazing, amazing uh, movement and mobility plays in Halo 5. Tons of that I wish I could showcase, but it doesn't really fit into a montage because it's just him moving around. But I wanted at least one piece of that. So this is a piece of him just showing his survivability and doing some crazy stuff. There are some cooler ones that just didn't fit in later. But if you're wondering why it transitions from him just throwing a flag and dodging some stuff. The mix of the cool caster audio and his mobility is why it's in there. Cause I want to showcase, you know, give it some personality. It's frosty. All right. So we're gonna go frame by frame for this one here, just to show you a little wipe transition. I did, you can see he's moving forward with the pistol and it cuts to him moving forward here. But what I do is on the beat, this, this part flashes on, I kind of add a glow to it and I just masked out the middle piece here. Then I have like a, clock transition so it's only a few frames but it's supposed to just make it feel a little smoother i'll play it in full time and of course because it's frosty you had to include all the bm you know give the personality frosty has so which is like a ton of bm and it uh i think it makes it hilarious so i add these little flares every time it shows the championship logo they didn't have that many clips in the finals so Sadly, sometimes there just aren't clips. They just play the game really nice. I could show them capturing the flag and winning, but just to keep the montage fast and go back into back into clips, I just show them defeating these guys and show the footage of them holding up the tournament or holding up the trophy. Every time uh, Brad or Frosty held up the trophy, he would reach for it like to help him. And it was so funny to cut around, not to make it look like he was like, oh, oh, are you careful, buddy? So I try to keep that out. So there's a little bit there. So this was done very early on. There's some more depth of field again, where I was obviously um, rotoscoping all this, keeping the foreground in focus, background out, then it switches. Then I start showing off a glitch effect here because later on I use more glitch effects. So this is like the introduction to the glitch by just subtly bringing it in, revealing this cool area, a light glitch. And as the glitch transition happens, which I think you can get these glitch effects uh, on Video Hive, I paid for a bunch of transitions and some of them were these video glitches so i just put like a light version of it there then i just added this grid on top which i don't think you even see the grid in full time not really but those are nice angles again with depth of field focus on the foreground background out of focus then it switches to this is out of or this is in focus and foreground's out of focus 
Same idea there. Then boom, I introduced the glitch again where I use the transition to cut from angle work. Kind of glitches into the HUD, I guess you could say, where it glitches like Frosty, the game, and the points. And then it fades on with a Luma Matte transition into the game. These beautiful angles. Okay, so let's talk with this first. So in the montage before this, I did a Halo 5 montage for Murfinator, and I started doing all these align effects, and I just really wanted to learn it a lot in the, like learn and improve it during the Murfinator montage, and I wanted to incorporate somewhat in here. So I have a tutorial on how I use these lines and how I make them look neon as well. It's a Photoshop plugin called Any Design 2, I believe, but you can look up neon line tutorial on my channel if you wanna learn how to do it. So my plan was, at, it's a professional pro player montage, right? I don't want to have a bunch of crazy effects distracting people. So I planned only on angles and only on certain things I would use this effect. So I decided to use the here when doing like the team logos and transitions like that. So it's more subtle and not kind of in your face. But you can see I draw them frame by frame. I have a breakdown of this. I have actually a tutorial or not tutorial, a video breaking down a lot of major effects in here. You can watch literally how this is built if you want on my channel. It's like frosty VFX breakdowns but I like the neon look kind of fade in the background, which is similar to where it was before. CLG is fighting Cloud9 and they beat Cloud9 and then they're gonna go fight Team Envious. So then Team Envious logo kind of comes in there. And then I have this transition where a piece of it falls and I use that to wipe the screen. Now, that's pretty bright, but if it happens fast, it looks nice. So let's bring it back. And slowly throughout the video, I've been adding these like little overlays I don't know if you notice them, whenever I try to do a fade, I add like a slight overlay. All right, let's back this up again. So he's just a subtle transition where after he kills this guy, his gun goes down and I rotoscope in the next shot, which I just rotoscope in his gun because he was kind of moving that similar direction, similar direction with the rail gun anyways. So then it cuts in, you can, you can see his rotoscope because there's no detail or I didn't do that part very well, but it's nice and smooth. This is out of focus and I do with the Luma matte transition, but this time from the side instead of from the bottom, which I do with the glitch. So you, you can see it's kind of trying to make this smoother, which I think it worked. All the caster audio is really good and makes it a lot here. So these tutorial or tutorials, I keep saying tutorials. These transitions are inspired by Silly Goose where it kind of wipes to the same positioning, but really we use that wipe to hide a transition. So it just shows them with the rail gun, it use the foreground to wipe. So really this is two different shots, but it kind of looks like I'm doing it in one. To reveal the guy here, and if you'll notice, I don't have the right helmet. I thought I had all the helmets for this, but this helmet is incorrect. When it cuts here, he has the, like the Spartan helmet. But if it goes fast, you shouldn't have noticed that, but again, Huge problem with Halo 5 is not capturing your own clips. So originally I had just like these 2D looking, I'll play it first. So originally after he gets the Killing Frenzy there, Caster obviously calls it out. You can see the transition from the regular Killing Frenzy logo to I think like an older one actually I used here for the 3D. In order to do this 3D, it isn't even anything fancy. All I did is literally in After Effects had multiple layers and I had them get darker after the first one and just kind of move them down in Z space. So it looked like a chunky thing, even though it's just a, literally a bunch of 2D layers stacked together. And using that with a combination of kind of moving, I guess I didn't do motion blur on them. I was going to, but that probably hides it. Yeah, you can see on the side here, it looks like a bunch of layers, but it was a lot nicer than what I had before. And I actually kind of like how it looks. Here's some glitch transitions right there and right here. And there's another mask transition here where I use something to wipe to the next one. And again, I don't know why I love doing this, but you see it's out of focus. So that means I had a mask. I mean, very simple mask here, like maybe like right around like that with a little bit of feathering, but it just looks so much more professional if there's a depth of field. Again here, all masking transitions. He's walking. This thing wipes the foreground and then it cuts to wiping from a different chunk of the map altogether, but it flows together where he's running here. 
then he's running there. You know, if you know this map, obviously these areas are nowhere near each other. And this is just amazing. So actually Unicheck gave me notes. I'm pausing every two seconds. I'm sorry. This is, I love this project. Unicheck gave me notes that um, Frosty for the scenario would have been crouching, but I've already went through all the effects here and I kind of lost the original project file for this area. So I kept it the way it was. So he should be crouching there, but he isn't because I had to recreate the angle. And this is just unbelievable. Just too funny, I was watching um, Royal 2's watch this video, like when it premiered, Royal 2 watched it and he obviously was streaming. And he talked about how he actually found out this angle, but of course, because Brad's so good, Frosty's so good, he's the one that got a clip on it. So I thought that was pretty funny. Then again, earlier on, I did a, this kind of effect where it shows he sniped two people with the same line effect and they, uh, there's two X's where they die. Then it transitions to this circle on the map becoming the double kill logo. But I found it looked too corny and cheesy until I kind of masked it over and changed the blending mode here and just kind of quickly had it hidden underneath and it looked a little more professional. So this transition here, I got a lot of praise for. Super simple transition again. It's on this channel for a VVX breakdown of how I exactly I did this. But the reasoning I did this transition was because the intro was just finished. I got the 3D work from the 3D artist and I wanted to incorporate that style of the blue lines, kind of like this look that he had for the 3D intro into the montage too, kind of bring it over. So that's what I tried to do here with this transition. These are mainly just me literally using the pen tool to create a lot of these lines and the cartoon effect in the background on some. But the main ones here, I just used the pen tool and then had it transition to this one here in Coliseum. And it turned out way better than I thought. This is one area I did not have looking like this until the very end. This is probably the last thing I did and it turned out a lot better. So if you're not happy with something, really keep going until you get something you like. And this is the famous clip where he just snipes Luke, or her hook. I said Luke, I don't know. Beautiful. So I might've went overboard with the snipe. It's probably better not to see all the crazy slow motion, but I don't hate it either. Obviously watching this in full speed without the slow motion might've been sick, but this really gives it a lot more power. And he was cutting on action right there. He's dropping down. He obviously has to clamber up and it cuts to him clambering up on the next clip. And this is a super low quality clip. That was one thing I struggle with too, is the quality drastically changes. I should have talked about this earlier. The, all the angles and the last half of the montage, all 60 FPS, all beautiful. The first half, the footage is 30 FPS. And I'll actually show you the exact moment it switches to 60 FPS. Now the video I'm recording now is only 30 FPS, but when you watch the real montage, uh, pay attention to the point I'm gonna pick out in the next song where it switches to everything 60 FPS and you should notice it feels smoother. But not only is the frame rate a problem, the bit rate when streaming, look how low quality this looks. Like the Xbox DVR is already a low quality trash we've had to use for a long time, but using 2016 streamed footage, ooh, especially it's been compressed on YouTube or wherever I got this from, it, uh, it doesn't look good, not in motion for some of this. So a way to hide that with color correction, I added some noise and I sharpened it as well slightly, but uh, there's no real fixing that. See, so like this angle 60 FPS and this is 30. All right, so this section that's about to part, jump up here where the commentators are talking and it shows this angle. Um, this originally, kind of like a lot of things when you're making a montage, the newest stuff is always your favorite. At one point, this section was my favorite part of the whole montage because it was so new and I liked it. It never had the CLG transition into optic logo at the beginning. And I almost liked it better with just this nice angle on Coliseum, but I wanted to tie in each time he switched teams. So I use the same line effect that I talked about earlier, just wanting to subtly have it uh, used and not too flashy. I mean, this part might be the worst use of it, but it's supposed to just transition. He was on CLG, it's a new year. He switched to Optic Gaming, Rip Optic Gaming. And you can't hear it with the audio, but the caster audio is amazing here. I just uh, put a collection of casters praising him basically. It was super hype. I still think this part is very hype, but at the time this was the most hype part, I thought. 
So I just slow-mo, kind of like a rough slow-mo, but I kind of like it anyways, where he just pegs this guy. So there's like two teammates around him and he pegs him. And it's actually caster audio where it says like, uh, he kills that guy without hitting his teammates, blah, 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 which is cool. But I almost, or I choose not to use it just because the song is now starting to ramp up. So this is like a, a big hitting point and then it starts to ramp up to where it's going to end in the next clip. So I, I liked using um, just the power of the images and the music more than the casters kind of covering it up because uh, another big thing I struggled with and another person I hired actually is I hired a music or audio mixer because I could not get the gun sounds, the music, and the caster audio to fit how I wanted it. It was peaking a lot and there was a lot of problems with that and I'm not the best with mixing it. So I did, again, all the sound design. I placed all the clips I mean, all the audio effects, all the gunshots, all the caster audio, all the music, uh, mainly the sound effects is like the hard part, but mixing all, I, I put all that onto the rough mix and I paid a sound mixer here in Vancouver to fix the levels. I would just tell him, hey, I want the sniper shots a little louder. Um, I don't want these to clash. So when the music is peaking and the casters are yelling and the gunshots going off, I don't want it all too loud. It sounds simple, but I actually struggle with that a lot. Uh, big ups to him. I think, again, this is the second person I paid for. So I paid for three people on this project. And I was thinking about making a video for why you should hire people for your projects. I paid for the 3D artists, which cost by far the most at the beginning, like a lot. Um, and then I paid, almost flipped you off. And then I paid uh, for the sound mixer, which was still a pretty high ballpark. But he put a lot of work in for the whole video, making it professional. Both these things made it super professional and a lot better quality than I could make it on my own. And the third is I paid for a guy to do the thumbnail. I think you should, no matter what, if you don't want to pay for a 3D artist and a sound mixer, depending on your video, that's fair. That's like taking the extra step. But paying for someone to do a thumbnail, especially on a big project, is a must. You should definitely do that. Went on rambling, but there's a lot of things I'm remembering as I'm going through this. So, all right, let's 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 get into it. Uh, So again, using the anime lines and using a flare. It's one of the first times I used a flare again in a while because I wanted to tone that down because I overused it in the snipe down montage. And here's a lot of disrespect. That's just funny to have. So here's another transition I did in the, the snipe down montage where I have the kind of HUD of the tournament overlay, kind of like wipe on. So you can see it wipes on to start the transition. A little more flares here. That thrust is amazing. I don't know if you guys really pay attention to how crazy this clip is. It's just a one kill, you think, but he's not holding the scatter shot. He has a pistol in the DMR, and he grabs the scatter shot thrust to juke this guy who has a rail gun. You can see he has a rail gun, and he just destroys this man. Let's play it again. Beautiful. Then he picks up the rail gun and transitions to him with the rail gun. You notice he kills this guy and says triple kill, and you're like, oh, Riley, oh, Mr. Riley, why are you showing only the triple kill and not the first shot of the double kill? Well, that's because this is tournament footage, and the guy who's controlling the observer mode did not watch or was not on Frosty's POV for the first two kills. That happens a few times. It looks like I'm just showing like the end of a clip, but no, it's because there literally isn't footage of the first two. So I could have went in, done 3D work with the angle, or done camera work with the angles and showed it from a different perspective then cutting to this. But again, that requires you to recreate all the angles. So for this one, just show he got a triple kill. Again, showing the world championship, I add this kind of like flare line. I don't know, I like it. Just this nice stick, but it's kind of more filler footage for that. Here comes some of the more famous BM. This was, uh, on the Optic team, was definitely a time where he BM'd these kids a lot. <laughs> Especially on Envy, too. So this one, I had a little bit more footage. So obviously, when they won the championship last time, I just kind of showed them win it. This one, there wasn't any sick clips when he was winning the championship, but there was a lot of BM, and it's iconic BM. If you follow the Halo championship series and you watch Halo 5, this is stuff uh, that'll be forever remembered more than some of these clips. Actually, this is a BM. Maybe not this one, but this one right here where he's shooting the logo. That's iconic now. I love this transition. So these are just individual snipes. 
they aren't part of a multi-kill. But um, oh yeah, it's kind of a nice transition. Have the guy come in, and then this is to the beat as this is building itself. You have to listen to it, obviously. But it, reminder, we're still in 30 FPS here. I'll tell you when it gets to 60. So it builds itself, just snipes this guy, transitions to him sniping another guy, which is kind of nice. And look at this transition. So he's dropping down with something in the foreground, and it cuts something in the foreground, kind of going the same way. But that's a cut. That's two different clips. Obviously, he's in two completely different parts of the map. But watch when it plays how smooth this is. Looks like one clip. And this is just double kill, but you got to include that BM. And I was trying to include the whole story. I have a ton of frosty clips, right? Don't want just the highest ones. I have this in here just because he's yelling at Mikwin. Like a perfect kill isn't that impressive, especially because Mikwin wasn't looking at him. But he kept BMing him over and over and over, which is, I guess, part of uh, the whole story. So this is the first time, and I think the only time I used the pin warp effect. I have a tutorial on this called Super Slow Motion. These are still images I'm transforming into a video. Now, this part's a video, but this is a still image. I just like the idea because the background looks so nice there. I wanted some slower parts and the slower part of the music. I find that really makes the pacing feel nice. This is just a double kill, but look at that prediction made. It was dirty. Uh, I did this in a few parts, but as it cuts on the beat, I like do a half cut where it shows the next place he's going to be already. Like that. And I think it does it again, but it does it horizontal this time. Half cut, half cut. Very subtle, and that part isn't the best use of it, but later on it's used, and it looks a lot better. Just kind of goes ding ding on the beat. Ding ding, and he's up. Yeah, here's a funny thing. So I gave the sound mixer an earlier cut to work on, and originally this was a, a wipe transition, and you can still hear the sound effect of the whoosh, right here even though it's just a fade now. Um, I kept it because I don't, it was a last minute thing I changed, so it didn't really need to be brought back into Pro Tools, which is like the audio mixing uh, software he uses. A lot more BM. All right, we're gonna switch into 60 FPS. I'll show you where. See if you can notice it, not on my video here. Again, this video you're watching right now is 30 FPS, but in the actual montage, pay attention to when it switches here. So 30 FPS, 30 FPS, 30 FPS, 60 fps boom it's way smoother I, this is one of my favorite parts the, i can't talk this is one of my favorite parts of the whole montage it's after he kills these guys he goes and caps the flag but i cut it on the beat so it goes da -da 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 -da. snipe or not snipe railgun but it, i think it's sick so this part here i put a lot in originally so you just see the logo and it kind of fades down but there's actually um some heat distortion so like from flames on the background here and there's embers blowing, but you can't really see it because it's subtle. But originally I had this big fire arrow whip around the corner here to show the next guy's going to snipe. And a lot of the times I make an effect, I'm like, oh, this is cheesy. This is corny. This takes away the professionalism. This isn't as nice as I want. And I just scrap it. But I ended up really liking the fire effects after he snipes the guy where I just have like embers and more heat distortion going on. So I kept that, but got rid of the ridiculous arrow that was here. I wish I could go back and show you guys. It was... Uh, it was all right for a montage, but when you're doing a professional player like this, I, I didn't want to keep it. So he snipes him. There's no fire effects yet. And boom. Okay, this, this overlay was added last, but there actually is embers that are going to come up. And you can see heat distortion right here. Which I think looks clean. The flare kind of just added to it. But I really like the heat distortion. And it's kind of subtle, not in your face. So he just snipes this guy, which is crazy. Then just have the sniper on fire for a second. This ending of this song. And then the beginning of the third song is where I took the biggest risk because I had a lot of really nice uh, clips that I changed and did a sky replacement. So I made all these day for night, which I made them night shots, and I replaced the sky. So this one's really easy. It's not even moving. But then I started doing these overlays where I kind of went crazy on the beat. So I have a Japanese roommate. And I should have got them to translate a little better, but I used Google Translate, which would say 2016 championship. 2017 champion and then all of these you see these crazy line effects at one point i had these over where they actually are so not these these ones are actually from uh murph new year's montage i mixed in but this this is the logo or the the trophy you can kind of see it flickering there of the 2017 one 
you can see this is the team when they're holding the trophy. These were actually over top of their original clips that these are effects of. And it just looked corny, it didn't look good. But as soon as I placed them over, also this is a beautiful shot. I loved, I rotoscoped this and changed the day for night and then uh, replaced the sky. Again, I have a breakdown of this on my tutorial or on my channel. But as soon as I, to the beat, added these glow effects over, I don't know, I just, I love it. it. Might be a little out there, a little weeby with some parts, I guess. The Japanese probably wasn't necessary, but the neon lights reminded me of that. And this is the best song in the montage. That part's the best too. Like, okay, you have to really watch it with the music, but it goes duh, 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 right there, it's to the beat, and I, I don't know, I love it. That part's sick. See how he's reaching right there? He's got it optic shirt on he's reaching his hand out that is one of the ones that i traced over and did the line effect for and it did not look good here i'll find it so let's back up right there look at that's the clip those guys are hugging he's reaching over he's got the optic logo so that's where that was traced from right there they're hugging he's doing that blah, blah, blah. that's where that's traced from So here's this part I was talking about. So the reason I show this from different angles, because again, the caster wasn't watching um, Frosty during the beginning of this multi-clip, but you can see he actually kills Pistola here. See on the side, Frosty killed Pistola. Then it cuts to Frosty's gameplay, which is nice. Remember that transition I talked about earlier where things kind of, what was it, like half cut on? That's what I did here as well. So this is a nicer version of it. That part actually is I'm pausing this way too much probably, but this part where he gets his triple, I don't know if you remember in the neon lines, there was a triple kill logo. It's because it was tracked right here and it shows a triple kill, uh, multi-kill metal, if I could talk. Then it transitions into a target and he actually would shoot the target and it became the triple, but it just looked corny. So I think I took it out. So that one's cool because it doesn't show the overkill till after. And he says, oh, he doesn't get the over. The caster say it, strong size says it. And then it gets it. He's like, oh no, he gets it. I thought that was cool. So here's some more mass transitions. Again, those are parts I actually did neon lines of the characters that didn't look good here. And I used it at the beginning of the intro of song three. Here's another example. Every time I did a light fade, I added these grid overlays. You can just see them lightly here just to add something to it, kind of the style I was going for. And this is an iconic shot too. That's ridiculous. Oh yeah, that's that part's hilarious. This guy's going around, and a Royal One's going around, uh, fist bumping everyone, and Frosty's too too busy just going like this, so he just gets left hanging. <laughs> he just dodges it, and he's just so sad. Uh, this It goes on longer too, but you can see his face, and then it changes. He's like, oh, oh. Just misses the, the fist bump. So I thought that clip was sick. No one, no one really talked about that. Oh, he's transitioned from optic to tox. So I just did the logo transitions again. Super simple on that one. Kind of went too crazy with the other one, so I wanted to tone it down. This is a crazy start of a game. Just overkills these kids, no problem. And this retroposity, retroposity, that's sniped down in Micklin's team. Doesn't care. So this is probably where it gets to the best part of the montage, at least for some of the speed and pacing, I feel. I don't know why, like I told you earlier, this is stream footage, but this clip looks like the highest quality clip in the whole montage. So bitrate got better. We're now in 2018 footage, so it looks a lot nicer than 2016 footage. This is all 60 FPS, so they're like, there's a lot more detail, and a lot more going on here. But this one looks super nice, I found. That almost looks like it's right out of the Xbox DVR, which is sad to say, because it's actually not that nice. But either way, this clip, he just beats two guys by himself with this gun. I think it's really nice. Just embarrasses those guys. And those guys are APG lunchbox. Like they were about to lose. And I, I think they might even win this game. It's hard to remember. We'll see. No, they lost. You can see. So this is another example. It says double kill. It says, but he gets an overkill. It only shows the overkill one here because the cast or the observer was not watching the first half. So I literally don't have clips for that. So let's just keep the pacing going. So this is probably my favorite parts. Just because Sims, the caster is yelling so loud. I think it makes it super hype. So again, I added a slight flare. It was added last minute. 
gets the second overkill as I, this guy holding up the Tox one, there's a ton of these and I actually masked them out using like that neon line effect too, or I mean not masked them out, but drew them out with the neon line effect, but I never kept any of it. A lot of BM, just looking at dead bodies, hilarious. Always on make one, I just realized, always. Beautiful shots, beautiful shots. All the shots and everything got better as it went on. So a lot from the trailer and a lot from the intro were from 2018, because quality just went up all around the stream and in the filming and like uh, he was wearing uh, cooler nicer stuff too so this part obviously they lose the 2018 championship and it worked perfectly with the slow sad part of the song and I really like the sound effect Cam actually added it himself but when it says championship championship kind of fades out the audio in the background like a sad sad audio uh, echo and it really helped it a lot he did that Actually, it was the same guy who did the sound mixing for the Snipe Down montage. It was the only two I've ever paid for a sound mixer. It's one of the songs at the end where he gets an overkill and he echoes overkill, overkill, overkill. And it just reminded me of that. Caster audio cuts out, you just hear the music. It's just ridiculous. Almost gets the over there, too. One of my favorite shots of the whole montage. Literally, the only thing I did was mask this out, add depth of field, and it just, it's a beautiful angle, beautiful map, beautiful colors, beautiful movement. Um, just ignoring the weebiness of it again. So I don't know why I kept this clip, it's just like a one hit. But this clip I should have showed more of, because he actually was full health, got hit down to no shields, and then just embarrasses Stellar right here. Stella, Stellar? So you see we transitioned into Forge maps now when they were getting near the end of Halo 5. I played a lot with these transitions here where I tried to have this wipe, then it cut to him running through the circle, but I could never get, like I want to transition this circle in with this one here, but I could never get it to flow. So this might be the weakest part of the effects of the montage, is that I kind of, like at the beginning of the montage we had it nighttime with like a replaced sky for a night sky. So I kind of, transition it from day into the night sky and looking back on it like obviously this looks steppy because this is actually a literal you can see it's steppy here in slow motion this is a literal time lapse and actual time lapses are still images taken over time so they're steppy anyway so that's what it would look like i had these ones i did little masks on the circles there and just had it kind of glow blue slightly it looks bad pause like this but in motion it's all right still the weakest part for sure of the montage I'd say for effects the anime lines slightly here and a grid effect very subtle but I liked it a lot this is a very simple angle but I love it, it just looks perfect there yeah, originally we didn't have this song but he just had so much footage and so many clips that we had to keep adding songs so I love these they just added very simple that's a default in after effects lens flare lens flare I could speak English, but just like in the snipe down montage, I use this flare to transition to another flare. So nice angle, flashes into where a light is on the next shot in the exact same positioning, well, very close. And you can see the cool sky effect there, then it cuts to that. Your eye is led to here, boom. Oh, you look over there, boom. Oh, there it's there. Same idea. Oh yeah, this one you can see where the streaming bit rate really hurts me. Because look at whenever he's moving fast, the screen, like the bitrate's really where it shows how bad it is. If he's standing still, it should look fine. But as soon as there's motion, especially with all these little lines trying to get the detail of, it just looks so bad right there. So like, this looks fine. This looks completely fine as you're looking at it because it's slow, there's not a lot. But as soon as he wipes that, you're like, oh, God, the, look at the quality of the gun. Look at the quality of the gun now. It's because the whole thing, like the bitrate is trying to even out all the detail here. It just doesn't look good. You, see, you can read the name Trippy. You can see Pickup Battle Rifle. As soon as he crosses this, you can't read or see any of that because the bitrate and the video quality of the stream is just dying right there. So that's one of the ugliest looking spots, which is funny in the nicest part where like the higher quality footage is. And this is some anime stuff here too. I like how it turned out though. Oh, and this is probably my favorite transition of the whole video. So a nice angle of the map, then cut into rig like that. So it's very simple, didn't do anything fancy here. I even added 
these flare effects after, which they don't need to be there, but I just added it to kind of tie into the next part. But literally just mask around that. Those come in, hit, there's a camera shake. I have a tutorial on camera shake if you want on my channel. And transitions to here. Let's watch that in real time. Probably my favorite part. Because it's just so simple and nice. So the song says burning me up. So I do the same distortion, add a little heat. It says burning me up again. You can see I do the heat distortion. You can see right here, very subtle because you don't want to be overpowering. Here's another example. You're seeing Lethal's perspective, but only because it's just to fit in. And it cuts to Frosty, he gets a kill, and that's actually a triple already because the caster or the comp, yeah, I keep saying caster because the observer missed the first few kills. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this chunk. My roommates really liked it, and it kind of has a shout out to old montages, but it shows different, these are literal spots from the montage that I showed earlier, like clips and then I'm cutting to basically spinning around during it. I guess the rocket one wasn't used, but, but my favorite part is actually, and then it shows him with the needler on rig and he's whipping that like a spin direction and it cuts to him spinning. So it's cut on action here where spin action cuts. And this is just here because of the caster audio saying, if you want to see, what's he say? If you want to see Halo 5 at his best, just watch Frosty. Then I show all the shots of Frosty being happy. Kind of like a nice way to uh, tie a bow on it. That's what I'm going for here. And I, it makes you feel good watching it. And I love this cut to black because the beat of the music is perfect there. So this is a little bit of a cop out, but I wanted to show all their achievements again. Um, I tried doing a thing where these were like still images and it was moving all fancy picture like, but it never looked that good. So I went back to video and just kind of cleaned it up. So right here for the commentator audio, he says, we are the greatest Halo 5 team of all time, or they are the greatest Halo 5 team of all time. And I got Cam to bring down the music for this, kind of the effect we did earlier, but I really got him, well, it was my idea, but he really made it look or sound a lot better. And that's kind of the end of it. That's the end of Halo 5, all the tournaments. After this, they started going into MCC and using tournaments from that. So to wrap a bow on it, kind of show them winning, cuts on the beat. I think I say thank you for watching with the same effect we did earlier. And then it's going to cut to the credits. Now there's two things. Frosty won two awards, and one of them is what I show in the credits. One is Best Sniper, and I think it was at the tournament before this they talked about that and they praised him for a sniper. Then the next one was best overall Halo 5 player. So he wanted both those in the montage. I couldn't really fit them unless we dragged out the credits. So I thought it was more important to show he's the best overall player and they talk about the sniper one too, but it's kind of like a nice flex or a way to wrap up the montage that I thought was very wholesome. And I didn't add any music to the credits because the broadcast that had this or the broadcast this stream that had these awards, which is the end of some tournament, had music playing anyways. So this is a Brad Frosty's um, links. You can get, get him on Twitter, Twitch. He streams a lot of Halo 5 recently, actually. He's been getting back into it. And his YouTube, obviously, he plays professional Call of Duty for a Florida team right now, and he's playing amazing. That's how talented he is. And it was great working on this project with him. It took about a year to make on and off, you know, motivation and <laughs> finding all the clips. It took a long time and just tweaking it. I spent the last few months with it like 99% done, just tweaking it, really. They kind of do their own little highlights, which is funny because there's a lot of some stuff I didn't include. Like, I didn't have that because these are their at-home tournaments. So you can see there's no, like, real nice overlay and stuff. I didn't include any of those, like, little at-home well, weekend tournaments where people are from their homes. I only used ones where they're actually at tournaments. That's why it's tournament-only footage. Here's my stuff, Twitter, and my YouTube channel which is this one here. Subscribe if you want tutorials and I'll break down effects actually from this montage. Um, it would mean a lot to me. I'm trying to grow on YouTube and I really want to make tutorials people like based around video game montages. So follow that if you like. Let's just whip through the last year. All the 3D work at the beginning. You want to hire someone to make your video way better? Hire this guy. Pay him the exact or pay him a high rate because he's worth it and he should be charging a lot more. Sound mixing, I got my friend to do this, but um, you could hit him up if you want for your own, but you probably don't need to. That's just an extra step I took. Uh, the music used in the montage, 
thumbnail, a guy who made it. Normally I go with Titan, who did the thumbnail for a Snackdowns montage, and Titan, if you're watching this, which I doubt you are, I only went with Paul because he's a local, and I met him through playing Super Smash Bros. Melee, so, you know, support your local scenes, support locals, and that's what I did there. Yeah, so that's the Frosty montage, kind of wraps it up with him winning this award and them patting him on the back. Honestly, I'm happy with how it came out. How it came out. Um, taking on a montage that is completely tournament footage means the clips will be lower quality, but they will be on professional. So as long as people recognize that, they can understand how crazy some of these shots and clips are. Um, they're obviously not like super high multi kills. They're not on shots on casuals that people get in social montages and stuff like that. Um, the effort I went into to finding these clips and to placing them in order and trying to tell a story somewhat, or at least his story in order, really limited some things in the video, but I liked the challenge. Originally when Frosty came to me, he wanted a video like like Crim 6's 2000K montage, which Sanctality or Logan Dawson made, which is literally not a montage, it's just highlights showing his whole career. Kind of has some nice stuff at the beginning like a montage, and then it's just the raw clips over some music, not really synced but I wanted to combine a Halo montage, like actually syncing clips with that idea. So this is what I've come up with. It's like a highlight, story highlights, meets montage, more montage when you watch it really. I, I love how it's turned out. I really appreciate people's responses to it and how nice everyone's been. I don't know, from here, we'll, we'll see where we go next. I'm doing a community montage with some of the big people in the community but there's no deadline on that. So I'm just doing that my own time. I'm really into Valorant right now. So maybe I'll transition into Valorant depending on how Halo Infinite is. We have to see how that is. We have to see how theater is. Who knows? I've been really into PC gaming. I might switch completely over to Valorant, but I love Halo, especially love making Halo videos more than playing. I really like editing them and I love the community. If you guys have any questions, I'm going to do a Q&A in these comments. I will answer all of your questions in the comments. So if you stuck all the way to the end, I really appreciate you. This has been a super long video and it means a lot to me that you stuck through. Maybe uh, you learned something or you just had a laugh at me fumbling, trying to drink and talk at the same time and going through the memories. But yeah, Q and A in the comments, uh, thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate that. And uh, I'll catch you next time guys. More tutorials this week. Thanks.